This is the guy to Georgia Outdoors, and we are two weeks into the uh, quarantine mode here. And today we're setting out trot lines, trout lines, whatever you want to call them essentially. Setting a line across a pond with a bunch of hooks on it trying to go after the catfish. Now keep in mind as they're uh, unloading the boat, this is not legal to do in public ponds if I'm not mistaken, don't quote me on that. So we're doing this in a private pond, we're going after the catfish. I got the uh, skipper as always, my dad. We've got our first mate Gilligan, AKA Jamie in the boat. And I am along the way to uh, provide good company and document this, but we're setting up a line for the catfish and hopefully tonight when we check it after dark, there'll be catfish on the line. Let's go for it. So our game plan is to go from this log right here, or this stump, all the way over. I know it's kind of hard to tell, but to that one way over there, the tip of my finger. That's uh, several hundred feet. Our trot line's not nearly long enough. And that log is almost gone after we hit it. But we're gonna start off, and you see right there, uh, remnants of cat lines past. And that is a huge behind wasp nest. I am glad there's not any wasp on there because I would have been jumping out of the boat. But we're gonna go from here. We're gonna start off with just blank line for about 50 to 100 feet, and then we're headed that way. Now we are tying the new trot line onto what we call our lead line, which is tied up way right over there. And at this point, we will start the hooks, but you stretch the line first, then come back and put the hooks in. We have a little bit of a mess, but that is part of the joys of running a trot line. When I was a kid, my dad would be up in the front swinging a paddle right now at us. water. Yeah, river. but this is uh, part of the joys. And I got a question. I want to know what you are doing in this time of quarantine when you can't really get out. I'm fortunate enough to have a pond and living on the farm where I don't really see people. So uh, I'm curious to what everybody else is doing at this time. All right, we just got tied off on this end. You can see the line goes all the way crossed the pond there was the original log down there now we're going to go through and tie the hooks on 25 hooks on this white line all right that took maybe 10 minutes or so to get all those hooks tied on and let me show you what they look like you've got the hook tied on double string to a clip now this and i'm sure that wasn't in good focus but this is very important the old swivel when a catfish gets on or a turtle, they're gonna naturally just spin in circles and circles. So if you make one of these homemade, you wanna make sure you put a barrel swivel because they will break the line eventually. So uh, we buy these kits already made up and uh, that's the way to go for us. Now we're gonna hook them up, bait them up, sink it in the middle and call it a night. I'm expecting some channel cat, probably a lot of speckled cat, but also from, the, from prior experience, I've got some soft shell turtle. And if I do get a turtle, He's going home with us tonight, and we will be having some turtle soup, turtle stew. I don't know. We're going to do something with the turtle. So uh, about an hour after dark or so, we're going to come back and try it, see what we got. We are back at the pond, getting in the boat right now. Been about an hour and a half. We all went back and ate dinner, got the camera set up with the lights. I don't know. I'm feeling optimistic. I think there'll be at least a catfish, possibly even a turtle. Jamie, do you feel anything? You know, I don't right now okay but uh we still a few feet away from the, the main line to the hooks nothing ain't nothing touched that bait a lot of empties right now or yeah. not empties but, but nothing nothing taking the bait at all there's the brick all right we just checked the trot line and not one bait has been touched so far I speculate that it's got something to do with that uh, moon overhead. Um, we may or may not check it later on tonight. I'm guessing probably no for some of these old guys. But uh, we'll check it in the morning and uh, see if there's any fish on there. But so far, you know, nothing. But that's still a lot of fun. It beats sitting in the house, I can tell you that. You can't catch them from your couch. All right, it's the next morning. We are back here to check the cat lines. But I have substituted Jamie and Dad for... I'm not sure if it was an equal substitution or if I stepped up or down, but I got Josh now 
and I've got Bailey, who have been no strangers to the videos. You've seen them before. But let's check the cat lines and see what we got this morning. Um, seeing a lot of blank hooks, which means we have been robbed. Blank. Every hook that we baited was gone. Every bait was gone off the hook, should I say. Not one thing was on there. I'm guessing turtles robbed us clean. I'm gonna rebait it probably this afternoon and uh, try again tomorrow. Uh, we are back in action. We have went from the pond over there. We just didn't have any luck on the catfish, so we have moved to a different pond. Uh, we set the line out the same way, so I'm not gonna show resetting the line. But what we're doing right now is changing the hooks out and baiting it up. And hopefully tonight, this afternoon, we'll have catfish on this one. So sometimes when you don't have luck, you can't give up. You just got to try something different. I believe so. There's something down there. There's something. We got one. Every bait has been untouched, but I do see something on the line down there. What we got? There's one catfish. Is that a catfish? Yep. Or a turtle. That's nope, a turtle. A turtle. Look at there. We're taking. Got an old soft shell. Okay. That's a good one too. That's not the biggest in the world, but that is a uh, pretty good soft shell. Hold it. Get him in the boat pot so we'll cut his head okay. off and we'll keep him. Okay, here we go. Alright. Gonna get him up. Pretty good soft shell. What we like to do is hold them right here till their head stretches out. I'm not going to show you on this uh, video, but he's going to get a haircut with a pair of shears we got. In just a second, he'll let go, and he's going to get him a haircut. Man, he smells, don't he? <laughs> All right, so there he is, our soft shell turtle. We're going to cut his head off, and we'll take it from there. <laughs> just swallowed a gnat or a moth. Although I'm excited about the turtle, it's going to be a catch clean cook. It's a little upset. That's two nights in a row we've run these lines and not had a single catfish. I think it had probably had something to do with the moon. We're going to, we might even check it again tonight, but for sure we're going to check it in the morning. Maybe there'll be a catfish or two, but either way, we got a turtle and there will be some turtle stew soup or maybe all the above or something else. Um, in order to cook a turtle, you got to clean it and that is something I've never done. So I'm just going to dig right into it. But before then, I want to show you a few things. Look at these claws on these turtles, man. These things are absolute, would light you up. These things are definitely predators. Um, I'm not going to crack the shell. I'm going to try to cut right in here and try to remove some of these, the meat off of these back legs. This is going to be new for me. I've, uh, if you've ever swam in a pond and stirred up the mud and what that smells like sometimes is not great. That's kind of what he smells like. The soap really helped out, so I'm just going to get into it. I'm going to see if I can remove the back from the, the back legs, basically, and take some of the meat off of that. And I'm still unsure of how I'm going to cook it at this time, but let's get into it. All right, I'm just going to take the knife and kind of separate the skin from the bottom of the shell. If I'm not mistaken, that's called a plastron and a carapace, if I'm not mistaken, back from my days of... Uh, herpetology. Okay, I'm seeing quite a bit of meat already on this thing. Okay, she was definitely a female. Loaded with eggs. Okay, getting somewhere now. There we go. There's where the bulk, there's where the bulk of the meat is. I'm gonna take a little bit of time and clean this off. All right, these are the two back legs, rather meaty. Um, kind of hard to describe the consistency yet. I'm gonna go in there and clean these up, maybe even debone it and see what I can do to uh, cook it. All right, I very meticulously just removed some of this meat from the back legs, deboned it. I'm noticing that some of the meat is a very light color, almost like chicken, and some of it's a very dark color. So uh, I was very meticulous and took away any kind of 
fat, connective tissue. So hopefully this will be all right. I'm going to marinate it. I changed my mind from the super stew just because uh, I don't really want to invest a whole lot of time in something that I'm not sure that I'm going to like. So I'm going to marinate it probably in some Italian dressing, something vinegar based to maybe take some of that uh, muddy fishy taste out of it. Then I'm going to batter it and fry it. The uh, turtle has been marinated in Italian dressing for uh, about an hour or so and these are the prime cuts. I'm going to be honest, out of all the animals that I've eaten, this one's probably the one I'm the most uh, hesitant about. I've got my uh, my flour with salt, pepper, seasoned salt. I'm gonna put the uh, put the turtle in the flour, and then we're gonna fry it up. I got the oil heating up right now. I think one of the best ways, the safe way, is gonna be frying it. All right. I still got some of uh, the second batch frying. It is time for the official Guide to Georgia Outdoors taste test. It looks pretty good, it smells pretty good. I'm gonna try this small piece, it's still pretty hot. Of all the meats that I've tried, this has probably gotta be the most uh, shocking and uh, impressive. I was not expecting this to be good, and that was actually great. Man. If you like chicken gizzards, it tastes a lot like a chicken gizzard. Man, that is very good. I, that is, I'm telling you, I am surprised about how good that is right now. That has changed my thoughts on turtles a lot. That is very good. And I'm not just saying that I have no reason to say that, but uh, go out and try it. I mean, there's nothing else to do. Right now I'm home during this quarantine with not a lot to do, so hey, I figured I'd try a turtle. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Go out there and try some turtle. The next time you'll think twice about throwing them back. I know I've been doing a lot of fishing videos, but hey, I'm kind of stuck at home and that's really what's in season. If you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel. I'm really trying to grow it. But until the next video, this has been the unofficial and no doubt incomplete guide to Georgia Outdoors.